Hello, welcome to the Q&A. Today I'm going to be answering to some of your comments and questions. What is your all-time favorite game and is it possible to clone it in Godot? So I don't really know what my all-time favorite game is. I know that I played a lot of games to a period of time and usually when I'm obsessed with a game I play that a lot. The latest one that I played completely was The Witcher and it's quite good. And I think that the one that I spent the most time in was Overwatch. I feel like that's the one that I spent more hours in, but I, I wouldn't call them my favorite games. And the second part about making a clone, the answer is always yes. You can make any kind of game in Godot. The problem is that some games are not really a good fit with it. You can make it work because since Godot is open source, you can extend it however you want. You need something to add open world things. You need to do any FPS stuff. You need to do platformer. Everything can be done. The problem is that sometimes it doesn't make sense to do it. You might want to do a first person shooter and maybe Unreal is a better option for you because you already have a lot of the materials that you need to get started and the engine was built for that, even though now it's used for so much more. Or you never know, you might want to do something really unique and Godot is maybe a limitation for you and you don't want to be dealing with that. You can start with something from scratch. So yeah, you can clone anything in Godot, but sometimes it doesn't really make sense. Are you able to make games that are moddable in Godot? Yes, yes you can. You can do them with resource packs. I'm gonna leave a link to the documentation, but basically you have all your scenes, scripts, and any resource that you want packed, and you can ship it to the users as an update or something like that, and the game will read the new information. This is something I believed it was done initially for DLCs, for games built with Godot, and it can be used for updates or mods or whatever you like. Another thing to consider is maybe you want to just open source your game. I don't know how big it would be, but if you want to make a game, the best way, of course, is having the source code. I know that it's kind of tricky because people could compile your game and get it for free, but a lot of games were doing that successful and maybe you should give it a try. For my own experience, the problem with modding is that you really have to think about modding a lot when you're developing a game. So if your project structure is not properly done, it might be super tricky in the end. So modding is something that sounds really good, but it's hard to actually implement because if your code changes a lot from version to version, modding can be a huge pain. This could be a really nice topic for a video, so I might visit this idea, but yeah, you should read the documentation. Make a platformer state machine, easy to follow. I don't plan on making any side-scroller platform game of the sorts. I think that that's super done to the, like, some million videos out there to do that. And about state machines, I think Game Endeavor has one for platformers and you should check it out. I don't usually use them exactly as people use state machines but it's a really good thing to have in your game. So if you're interested, you should check that video out. Hey Emilio, I enjoy watching your videos and thought I might ask a fellow developer for some advice. I've been working on a game in Godot and I am at a point where I don't feel the same fire I felt when I started the project. Do you have any suggestions on how to get motivated again? So thank you so much for this question. And yeah, you know, starting a project is always fun going from zero to having an empty canvas to having a game starting to come along is super exciting and the first part of the development is always super flashy every time you go and code and do something then the game is so much better but once you have all the basics there once you have all the structure it starts to get a bit hard because you dedicate the same amount of time as you did before but you don't feel the difference that much from zero to one than from let's say three to four because when you are already with your character moving around and stuff, you start doing the boring stuff. Maybe you start to balance the game. Maybe you have to do some areas that you are not comfortable with. And from conception, a lot of the ideas are good on paper, but not actually good when you implement them. And that's also another problem. So it could be super nice to think, okay, I want to have this dynamic weapon system that takes the power from the stars and, you know, have all these complicated mess in your head and you want to go into the game is yeah super easy I, I get the date and the player is on in this rpg and then i multiply but then when you actually go there and code it it's like whoa this is super hard you know like i don't know where to start i don't know what i'm doing and that could make you lose the motivation that you initially have 
because again like at the beginning you have nothing going from nothing to something is super nice but going to something to something finish is super hard if you really believe in your idea and you think that you want to see that game release and you want to go through it one cool trick to do is set a goal of five minutes per day only five minutes because if you think about doing I need to do five hours a day or eight hours a day on this game, you're never going to sit down because thinking about the task is so much harder than actually sitting down and starting doing it. So having unrealistic goals usually dissuades us from actually starting to work on them. So setting five minutes, it's a perfect good amount of time. Five minutes, like one song and a half, two songs. It's okay, I'm going to work on this only for five minutes every day and let's see what happens. And you will see that tricking your brain, thinking that you're going to be going in five minutes will make you start the task and you will get hooked and you will continue more than five minutes. So even if your goal was five minutes initially, you will realize that you maybe ended up using half an hour, one hour, two hours, even an entire day because the hardest part is sitting down and starting. So try to set that goal and try to work on your idea. I've been trapped in a game for way too long and I might tell that story maybe in another time, but I know that it's really hard. So try to set some small goals and try to go step by step. How did you get into game development stream like entering into Game Maker Studio and what made you shift from Game Maker Studio to Got Out? No hates and no offense. I don't know why I would be offended, but okay. So my brother and I always were playing video games, starting with the NES, and then, you know, we always wanted to make games, but we didn't know that it was possible. We always thought that it was something reserved for really good programmers with big brains, you know. And then one day we were playing a game in our first computer, and when we saw the credits, it was built by, a, I think it was a 13-year-old, 14-year-old. And my brother and I were like, whoa, like, can a kid make this? We were that age at the time. And we thought, why aren't we making this? So we started digging and digging, you know, there was almost barely no internet at my home. But with the little that we had, we started researching and we started making mods for games because that was easier. You know, some of the games that we had, they had the sprites over there that you could modify. So we started modifying sprites and we started learning a little by little. But yeah, after making mods and starting programming, I picked up Game Maker just by chance. I believe it was version four, something really ancient. And after making games in Game Maker for a while, I, I grew as a programmer, starting in web development. And I noticed all the limitations that Game Maker had. And that's when I also discovered Godot, which was so much mature in terms of a programming environment for you to use. So I moved to Godot and yeah, here we are. What is the biggest problem of Godot mobile game platform? So I guess that you mean what's the biggest problem of making mobile games with Godot? And um, for that, I believe that it's the same as in any other platform. I don't think that it would be any different than making games in other engines. The main issue for me for game development in phones is that you are super limited to only use the touch screen as an input interface. And I don't really like touch screens. They are very unresponsive. They are not really precise. So for the games that I like, they are not really a good match. But I believe that Godot has also this problem with the rendering. That's the impression I get from reading the GitHub issues. I haven't actually tried them. But since you have so many different phone manufacturers and they all have a different version of Android or iOS, so your game might work in this one, but not on the other one. And that could be a problem with the GLES two or three or whatever you're using. So generally speaking, the problem with phones is the segmentation, how different they are, the resolutions are going to be different. And that's not something that is not particularly tied to Godot. It's more about making games for phones. So unfortunately, I don't have any experience in making Godot games for phones, but I hope that that helped you maybe think about what are the inconveniences. So this is for this q and I hope you liked it. And if you have any other questions, you can leave a comment below. And please remember to share, like, subscribe, all know those things. And if you want to chat with me, you can do so in Discord and Twitter. Thank you everyone for your time and see you next time. Bye.